Listen. As a huge Batman fan, I've followed various video variations of the Joker. I've seen him as a goon, a psycho, a Lego. He's been caught by Scoobs. He's danced a prince. He's been the best incarnation already. He's been Oscar worthy. He shopped at Hot Topic. But here we have one that comes off as less of a villain and more of a victim of Gotham City. Or as he puts it, society. This isn't really the clown prince of crime who killed Robin with a crowbar, as he is the result of the 1% doing away with most people like they were trash, turning the city itself into a literal dumpster fire. Is it practically a reskin of these two movies? Yeah, but it's a really good reskin of these two movies, and it takes from one of the best Batman novels. If you've been looking forward to it, then it's probably everything you want and more. If you're against it, then yeah, it's gonna be as bad as you think it is, because while I'm not one to censor movies, I'm not one who believes that you shouldn't be able to watch whatever you want. Uh, it was what, last year that kids were still eating Tide Pods, so I do get the concern of kids just wanting to do things for the meme. I've shopped at Woodfield many times. I've never seen doorbuster deals like this. But I'd like to think we can differentiate good and evil in our media, even when the director can't. But man, does Phoenix own this role. I'm not saying it's better than Ledger's, but it rivals it. And yet the best thing that could have happened to this movie was for it to not be associated with DC at all. Let me explain. Now we had mentioned how DC's anti-cinematic universe is the best way for them to go because I'm honestly really excited for their stuff now. It kind of feels like I'm walking into a comic book shop when I go to their movies where if I may not like one of the incarnations that they have of a character, at least I know there's going to be several others out there. It also doesn't limit the storytellers to an overall continuity or tone. And with this one, man, they rearrange everything that we knew about the Joker. Now Todd Phillips is racing with Adam McKay to see which one of these comedy directors can win a dramatic Oscar first but the filmmakers have gone on record as quote the goal was never to introduce joaquin phoenix into the comic book movie universe the goal was to introduce comic book movies into the joaquin phoenix universe there was also i literally described to joaquin at one point in those three months as like look at this as a way to sneak a real movie in the studio system under the guise of a comic book film it wasn't we want to glorify this behavior it was literally like let's make a real movie with a real budget and we'll call it effing joker that's what it was. Sir, man, there have been a lot of real movies dealing with superheroes. Just like the movie, these quotes can come off super corny at times, but he does make a little bit of a point. If this movie had cut its budget to a quarter, kept the same crew, the same script, just took out all the DC licensed names, no one would have batted an eye that it went at Venice. There's been dozens of films that have dissected killers. We've awarded them. We've studied them for seasons. But the difference here is that the audience is cheering for a really high-profile villain who's ripped his face off in the past. He's kidnapped his therapist, paralyzed Murdered a young a child lady, spandex, blown up a police station by wife, implanting a cell phone bomb into Gotham. an inmate. But hey, if Batman can kill, why can't the man who electrocuted his lover get his own falling down? Let's call it a day. Come on. I'm the bad guy? It's so effective at sympathizing with the Joker, or I'll call him Arthur, that I have to give credit to Phoenix's performance. I still prefer Sandler's Uncut Gems a bit more, just saying, but sitting in a crowd of people cheering at the late night bit, man, if you've seen that scene, you know what I mean when I say I wanted to rush out of that theater faster than JJ wanted his pictures. Yeah, the movie is open to interpretation, with the cast overly emphasizing that in interviews, and I do believe that there is a version of it that drastically changes the way you see the movie, and people have come out seeing it various ways. That said, I think we're all mostly here for Phoenix. The dude lost so much weight that they couldn't do that many takes considering his body could barely handle going up the stairs. He would walk out on the cast or lose it at times in between takes because of all the pressure. Phillips was actually the one who gave him the journal to write all those hello darkness my old friend notes, meaning they come from him. Which y'all also voted that as some of the best lines of the year before y'all even saw the movie. All I have are negative thoughts. That said, I don't blame Phoenix for this role. He just played a serial killer and got praised, so I do see his intention as just uh, as an actor looking for a great character study. Phillips, on the other hand, is mad people don't like his jokes anymore. Like He's acting like Joker in The Killing Joke. Dude's making fans of Joker and those who hate the Joker all agree on one thing. Todd Phillips, shut up. Phoenix said he didn't want his character to be relatable in any way, even going out and saying, I didn't want a psychologist to be able to identify the kind of person he was. And you gotta remember, 
This dude went off for a year, said he was retiring and done acting, that he was gonna become a rapper and pulled his own late night stunt, and went off the rails, all for it just to be some experimental feature film? Some, some documentary directed by Casey Affleck? Yeah, when this came out, even critics were like, what the? Fair to say, Phoenix was the perfect person for the Joker. I don't think I'm gonna get his dancing out of my mind. Uh, he has a scene involving a door lock. Uh, you'll know <laughs> when you see it. That legitimately scared me. It had my palms sweatier than M's. And if you can put the almost 80 years of maniacal torture that this character has caused, if, if you're okay with coming into this movie and seeing it as a completely different version of this character, you'll find a movie that critiques the higher ups and those in charge. It's definitely no parasite, but it subverts some other characters we've known and uses them as an example of the ripple effects the 1% has when it disposes of the other 99 like they're trash. Would I suggest watching its influences instead because they handle the themes better? Of course, but just like Guardians became a generation's first space adventure, I agree 100% with senior film critic on Letterboxd, David Ehrlich's statement that the next indie stories will have an alter ego as a blockbuster. They're already scooping up those indie filmmakers and scooping up the gold. These caped here heroes have become our new Greek gods that we idolize and worship. So it's going to be interesting to see where DC decides to take their future cinematic tip. Especially if we get Jonah Hill as Martha. What does that mean? Why did you say that name? Thank you guys for checking out this video. I'm curious to know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Uh, probably one of the biggest debates out of this one, besides, you know, people losing their minds, is the Heath versus Phoenix debate. And again, uh, the way I would describe it is, Heath was darker, but Phoenix was darker, you know, like, because one's a supporting character where his anonymity is like highly emphasized. You're not supposed to know anything about him. But in the other one, like, I know what medications Arthur was taking. Uh, my favorite will always be Mark Hamill's take in the animated series if I'm taking the shortcut out. But I would say Ledger, you know, he still has it for me, uh, mainly because this scene alone is still coming true. Upset the established order and everything becomes chaos. That said, I think we're all going to miss the days of BVS and the Snyder Cut crowd because, you know, at least those people, you know, they were arguing for, they were defending a movie with heroes. Uh, this one isn't a hero. But as a fan of both DC and Marvel, I'm excited. You know, as a bigger fan of fanboys dueling each other out on social media, man, I am ecstatic. Uh, I, I like that they're finally both on the same playing field. Both have different movies up for awards. <laughs> I was seeing DC fans pull a bougie, uh, I don't know if you ever heard people say Tarjay instead of Target, the store, and they were calling this Joker after it won Venice, but hey, they're all doing different things, and as a fan, we get to consume it all, so we win. I love it. Other than that, let me know your thoughts on Joker. Let me know what movies you're most excited for, and other than that, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, so we can boycott Maleficent next.